Last night, the first episodes of the new documentary series Surviving R. Kelly premiered. And they detailed some of the allegations against R. Kelly going back a number of years. But notably absent from those episodes were many of the artists who knew R. Kelly best, choosing not to appear on tape to speak about R. Kelly and their experiences with him. So what is all the controversy about in detailing fairly well known allegations at this point? We're joined by a guest now to help break it down. This is David Dennis Jr., Senior Culture Editor at Interactive One and Adjunct Journalism Professor at Morehouse College. David, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, very glad to have you here. So uh, based on the two episodes that are available right now, uh, what is your initial uh, reaction to the documentary series? Uh, well, I thought that I knew sort of the depths of R. Kelly's uh, alleged crimes with underage girls. Um, we knew that he had been married to Aaliyah when she was 15. Uh, we know about the infamous quote unquote P tape. But the depths of just how vile he was is really shocking. They go into detail about him having underage girls in the studio with him while he was making his songs. About a lot of the songs, one of the songs allegedly, You Are Not Alone, that he wrote for Michael Jackson was about an underage girl who had a miscarriage. You know, the way he just went to malls, scoping out girls, all this stuff that adds a lot of color and a lot of uh, more detail about just how vile uh, this man is. Wow, I did not know that about You Are Not Alone. That is uh, that is pretty dark. And right. uh, in advance of the documentary coming out, I saw on social media a list of some of the, the big stars, uh, generally in music, but not necessarily just in music, who were asked to participate in the documentary, but chose not to. And there were only a few, I mean, John Legend did uh, participate and he's been very vocal against R. Kelly. Um, why do you think that uh, Dream Hampton, the producer for Surviving R. Kelly, why did she have so much trouble getting these people to go on the record? Well, what we've learned here is that uh, one of the interesting aspects of the documentary is that R. Kelly was aided and abetted by a network of people who were complicit and uh, you know helping him go find these girls. I mean, this was not just him doing this on his own. He talks about uh, the documentary talks about men who would go to malls and find girls for him, or who would lie about Aaliyah's age when he got married. And a lot of these artists that Dream Hampton reached out to do have a relationship and did have a relationship with R. Kelly after uh, these allegations came out, after he was married to Aaliyah, after the tapes came out. And I'm sure a lot of them don't want to answer for how they aided his career. It's It just seems amazing to me because I don't, look, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. I don't really pay attention to music news too much. I don't follow music all that closely. But even as a casual observer, I mean, I obviously knew about this years and years ago. I mean, it's been out there for so long. It was casually joked about on the Chappelle show and things like that. For people to feel like it's still so off limits to name like the obvious seems odd. In sort of related to that, like we've had opportunities where we as a society could have done something about this. I wanna mention one interview that a Torre did with R. Kelly years and years ago where he asked R. Kelly if he liked teenage girls and R. Kelly answered, how old are we talking? Right, But right. that didn't that didn't really hurt him that bad apparently. Yeah, well R. Kelly is on the interesting, uh, beneficial for him intersection of two things. One, the fact that he is a uh, superstar uh, celebrity and also the fact that uh, most of these crimes have been committed against black women, which society as a whole does not really care about. I mean, finding justice for black women has been hard to do throughout the history of America. So R. Kelly is in that nice little pocket of being able to get with, get rid of, uh, you know, get away with a lot of uh, heinous acts because of the people that he is impacting are generally the lowest of the low in society in terms of what America values in terms of who, just, who deserves to get justice. So are you surprised by the continuing support for R. Kelly in terms of his music, his ability to still do shows and you know, sell albums and all that? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not surprised by it because like I said, uh, He's affecting black women, and the fact that he's doing this allows him to sort of go under, you know, to be a celebrity under the guise of either innocence or people don't care or people feel like uh, these women don't deserve justice. So I'm not surprised that R. Kelly uh, has maintained his celebrity status. I mean, you look at uh, some of the other uh, sexual assaulters in the history, uh, you know, in history, uh, Louis C.K., 
uh, is out doing comedy shows now. Woody Allen was all, was always able to make movies. Um, you know, the Me Too movement has stifled a lot of this, but these are these people have been able to come back. So, and they a lot of these the women who are impacted were white women. So, just imagine what you can get away with when you're doing this to uh, women of color. So do you feel like Louis CK's ability to bounce back relatively quickly? I mean, R. Kelly, you know, he's you know, still selling shows and everything. Theoretically, in a you know, in another universe, he might be a bigger star if we'd never found out about any of this. Do you feel like there's a very strong racial component in what society will tolerate from these stars? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's more so about who the victim is, more so than about who the actual perpetrator is. Uh, we'll see that if you are doing these things black women, you can kind of go through your career relatively uh, unscathed. Uh, you know, even now there are new artists, you know, uh, uh, Extentacion who uh, passed away uh, last year was on his way to a viable rap career with a history of doing some terrible acts with abusing women in his life. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely, uh, a racial component here um, and in regard to the level of what you can get away with. So the argument that you often hear uh, when you have someone who maintains a career despite people genuine, generally agreeing that they did these things is that they are separating the art from the artist. Do you buy that argument at all? And if so, when is it appropriate and when is it not? No, I don't buy that argument at all. There's no way to separate the art from the artist because the the person who you are goes into your art. Uh, you look at R. Kelly, uh, he had underage girls in the studio while he, while he was making his songs, like they were part of his art. He made an album with Aaliyah, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, that was part of his art. That is his love of um, abusing underage girls intersecting with his art. There is no way to separate them. That is who he is as a person. Look at Woody Allen. His movies were all about older men and younger women. Louis C.K.'s um, TV show was, uh, there were a lot of scenes of him not understanding the boundaries with women and pressing up on women. This is part of who you are. Like if you are a rapist, if you are a racist, if you are a sexual assaulter, that is who you are. And it's impossible to make art or to put out any energy in the world that does not reflect who you are. So then uh, you're a journalist, you write about these sorts of things, lots of people care. I mean, they're, they're gonna watch the documentary, there's that. But other than that, if people care about this, what can they either as potential consumers of music or journalists who talk about these sorts of things, what can they actually do in this case? Uh, well, for I guess mostly, well, first in the abstract, just listen to um, accusers, listen to survivors, listen to black women, listen to women in general, listen to people who say that these things are happening. Um, more concrete, stop listening to R. Kelly, stop going to his shows, uh, stop supporting R. Kelly, stop making excuses for R. Kelly. Because um, really all these excuses are just thinly veiled ways to uphold rape culture. That's all it is. So stop supporting these people. I mean, you know, whatever the whatever happens with the law, uh, we really can't control what happens with the law, but we can control how much money they get and how much we are perpetuating and promoting uh, rape culture by supporting these people. David Dennis Jr., thank you so much for joining us. Uh, very illuminative on this issue. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks for watching this free clip of the Young Turks. Don't forget to become a TYT member today. For more exclusive content, join now at tyt.com/join.